Hey kids, it is great for us to be able to keep talking about God and about knowing about God. And this week we want to look at the whole idea of God as a great God, a majestic God, a powerful God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for those who will tune in and who will study this with me. I ask, Lord, that you will open all of our hearts, that we might see you as a great and a mighty God, and that you would continue to open the eyes of our hearts, that we would understand uh, your greatness and your power. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, kids, sometimes it's really hard when we think about God and we think about his greatness. Sometimes it seems like he's really far away because we can't see him. Um, we don't hear him audibly. We don't always feel his presence. Uh, and so it can be really, really hard in believing about God and in knowing about God to feel like we really, really understand his greatness. I want to tell you about 1 Kings chapter 18. Uh, maybe you can read this or maybe your folks can read it and you guys can talk about it. And you think about this whole situation. But there was a time when the king was really, his heart was really set against God. And Elijah, the prophet, had declared that there will be no rain until, God, basically God tells him there'll be rain, and until he declares it. So Elijah went and hid because the king was really mad at Elijah and wanted to kill him. He went to he sent messengers into all other countries to try to find Elijah, but the Lord had hidden Elijah, and Elijah was safe. And after three years' time, the Lord said to Elijah, go present yourself to Ahab, the king. So Elijah went back, and he actually appeared first to one of Elijah's servants, who actually was a godly man, Obadiah, and, and he told him, go find Ahab. I'm ready to, to meet with him. And Obadiah said, please don't hide, don't run, don't let the Lord take you away from me. I've protected a bunch of prophets. I've done all kinds of things. And Elijah said, no, go get the king. I'm going to meet with him today. So they did. And Elijah basically said to Ahab, okay, your wife, Jezebel, the queen, she has about 400 prophets of Baal. Let's meet and here's what we'll do. We will both make altars and we'll both put sacrifices on the altar and the prophets of Baal will pray for Baal, their God, to send fire from heaven and consume the sacrifice, and I'll do the same thing. And whichever God answers, that one is the true God. Well, that sounded like a real good idea to the people. So that's what they did. So the prophets of Baal made an altar, they put a sacrifice on it. They, they did everything that they would normally do. And they started to then ask Baal to answer. Well, they started in the morning and they kept going and going and going and nothing happened. And Elijah said, okay, maybe, maybe he really is God. Maybe he's just taking a nap. Maybe he's busy. Maybe he's doing something else. Yell a little louder. Um, and they were jumping up and down, and they were even cutting themselves um, so that they would try to get Baal's attention. Well, nobody answered. So at the time of the evening sacrifice, about 6 o'clock in the evening, Elijah said, okay, my turn. Or... God's turn. And so Elijah made the altar and dug a pit around the altar. And he said to the people, put water on the sacrifice. Do it again. Do it again. And they put water on the sacrifice until it was soaking wet. 
And even in the trench that was around the altar, it was filled with water. And the scripture doesn't really tell us exactly how Elijah prayed. I'm thinking it's probably a really simple prayer where Elijah asked the Lord to send fire from heaven and to consume the sacrifice. That's exactly what God did. God sent fire from heaven. It ate up the sacrifice and the stones and the water, all kinds of stuff. The, the, sacri the, the fire from heaven was really, really powerful. And all the people saw that God answered from heaven with fire, that God is God. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Now, the reason I tell you that story is I think it's a really great story to think about the greatness of God. Imagine being here on earth and asking God to do something and he did it. He heard his prophet and he answered. Now we know that God has fulfilled his promises for us in Christ, in his word, and that he sent Jesus into the world to give his life, to pay the penalty for our sin. When you think about God, and even though you know God is in heaven, and it might seem like he's far away, through Christ, He's really also come to us. And by the power of his spirit, God comes into the hearts of those who trust him and who believe in him. And so we know that God is a great and a powerful God. He made everything. So we can't really fully understand his greatness. But it's a really wonderful thing when God tells us in the Bible things like this about the prophets of Baal, that God is a powerful God, the true God, the one God who answers from heaven. So when you pray, I want you to remember that God always hears our prayers and always answers us. He doesn't always give us what we want, but he always answers us for his glory and for our good. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the time that you give me to be with these guys. I thank you for this chapter. And I thank you for your greatness, your power, and your majesty. Open our eyes, the eyes of our hearts, to see you as the great and the powerful God. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next time.